terms of where we're going with this, uh, if we could finish at 15.40, that would be absolutely fantastic. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the, uh, for the introduction. So I'm a lecturer in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace at Sprackly. So you might ask yourself why an aerospace engineer is talking to you today, but we have many years of experience of uh, scheduling uh, satellite operations. So we came across the possibility of this project to try to apply the same algorithms and the same techniques to schedule the uh, home cares in, uh, in Glasgow. So this was a six month project that ran a few years ago in 2018. It was uh, funded by the Data Lab and Cordia that now is a part of the Glasgow City Council. Um, and the scope of the project was to demonstrate the uh, added value of uh, schedule optimization. So um, algorithms that automatically optimize schedule using the real data of the home cares from, uh, from Cordia. Uh, these were the people involved in the project, so I need to give, to give credit to the researcher, Matthew Polnik, that was my student that did most of the, of the, of the legwork in this project, and then it was supervised by me, another academic in the, uh, the uh, management science department, Jeanette, that is part of the Digital Health Institute at Stracklight, and Kimberly, that was, called, was part of Cordia, and now is part of the Business Intelligence Unit of the Glasgow City Council. So a bit of, uh, of context of this project, uh, Cordi Cordia now, as I say, part of the Glasgow City Council, uh, was the largest home care service in Scotland. So at the time of the project, so four years ago, they had uh, approximately 2,700 carers, cover 6,000 6, users, and you have uh, approximately 95,000 home visits uh, per week that were scheduled manually by a team. Uh, in Cordia. The number might have increased uh, by now in the last four years because this was really the challenge they were facing, more demand, uh, but not room to accommodate uh, this, uh, uh, this demand. So they came to us and they asked, is it possible to optimize the scheduling uh, um, with respect to how we are doing things um, nowadays because uh, we, we, are, we are having an increased, uh, uh, an increased demand. Uh, so what we wanted to, to demonstrate was the use of this efficient automatic uh, routing and scheduling uh, algorithm to try to unlock uh, more uh, resources to deliver more services with their current workforce. Another important thing to contextualize the project is that since 2016, 2017, they have equipped all uh, their home cares with an app. So when they were going delivering services, they were recording uh, the address of the visit, uh, uh, the task that they, 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 they deliver for that visit, when did, they, when did they check in, when did they check out, when was the plan time, when was the plan uh, end time. So they had an enormous uh, amount of data that made them understand that there were, there were still resources that they could uh, better uh, invest uh, and data for us to try to model uh, the problem in a more uh, realistic way. So when I say the, the problem we solve is a routing and scheduling problem, uh, there are these two comp components. The routing part uh, is uh, the algorithm uh, needs to decide uh, who of the cares goes where. And the scheduling part of the algorithm need, uh, needs to uh, uh, autonomously decide who goes when. So these are kind of questions that the algorithm needs to find a solution for. And you have obviously a lot of constraints. So who goes where, you might have a cluster of demands, so like regions where there are more, uh, uh, more visits to be served, serviced, and maybe visits that are more in sparse regions, so that require longer uh, travel time. Another challenge is that some visits maybe requires two carers, so you need to have two people in the same place at the same time, so this is what I call synchronization. And for the who goes when, for the scheduling, the constraints are the shift patterns that the carer is working on, the contractual breaks of the carer. Uh, we allow an anti-minutes uh, time windows to, to shift the planned visit to give a bit more freedom to the algorithm to find interesting solution. And also, as I said before, some visits might require two, uh, two carers. So they need to be in the same place, but also at the same time. 
So Glasgow at the time had 25 uh, operational areas, so they were doing the scheduling per, uh, per area, and there are uh, a maximum of 430 visits a day in the biggest area of Glasgow that needed to be, uh, to be scheduled. Uh, if you look in the literature, there is a, a problem solved in other um, domain. There is a, a scheduling of uh, technicians that maintain plants, uh, scheduling of security guards, of nurses. So it's a well, it's a well known problem uh, in, the, in the operational research community. But the challenges uh, are really the ones that I mentioned also in the previous slides, the synchronization. So some visits are, are, uh, need to have two carriers. So you need, uh, the algorithm needs to allocate two people in the same place at the same time and needs to take into consideration all the other constraints of the problem, the contractual agreement, like the breaks or, or the summer holidays, um, uh, if, they are, if they are allowed uh, overtime and how, how much uh, overtime if they carry their particular skills. And usually when you try to solve this problem, each solution is really customized for a particular application. So it's quite, it's quite difficult to take, for example, an approach done for scheduling maintenance of a, of a, of a power plant and try to apply it to the to the uh, home care problem. The, the solver is going to be the same, but how the problem is formulated mathematically that differs, uh, uh, differs from application to application. And you can also do daily scheduling, that's what we were doing. So you solve uh, each day uh, at a time, or you can do multi-period scheduling, so scheduling maybe the entire week. And obviously you get different solutions. The algorithm as visual over the all, over what's happening during the whole week, you will get you better solution, but will be a bigger problem and so much more complex to solve. So this is part of uh, the, the method, the, the, the algorithm that we applied belongs to this, this class of mathematical optimization. And when you want to solve a, pro a problem with this algorithm, you need, you need to define the constraints and the objective. So the constraints uh, are all the one that I mentioned before uh, that uh, can tell the algorithm to discard the solution that don't respect all these uh, uh, all these uh, conditions and the objective function is okay once you have found a solution that respects all the conditions then uh, uh, how do you decide one solution is better than another one that respects all these conditions so that's that's what uh, the, the 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 objective function is and if you want to read more about uh, all the mathematics behind these uh, all the keywords are linear programming integer programming constraint programming this is all uh, the, uh, the methods that are available out there to try to solve, uh, to solve this problem. So for, uh, for our problem, the, the objective was uh, minimizing the travel time. So given a solution, which care goes where and when, we were computing travel time automatically. The sum of all the travel time, we were trying to minimize that. So we were preferring schedules that has a lower uh, travel time. And as a secondary objective was the continuity of care. So prefer schedules where the same carer was returning to the same uh, uh, patient. And then the constraints are the one that I mentioned before on contractual breaks, uh, uh, shifts, uh, uh, number of carer per visit. Uh. So we need to compute travel time automatically. So there are uh, uh, tools out there that can do that. You probably use Google Maps, but we need something that we are able to query uh, automatically. And for Google Maps, you need to, to pay to be able to do that. And, you, uh, and we were starting from the address of the visit that was in natural language, like the one in the slides. The, so from the uh, address in natural language, we convert this uh, in... Uh, um, geographical coordinates, latitude and longitude, this is called ge geocoding, and there, is, and there are tools that can do that for you. And then once we have the coordinate, the, the two location in uh, geographical coordinates, then there are tools that can tell you which is the travel time by, by foot, by car, by bike, you decide also the mean of uh, transportation. So what we have done at the beginning was computing this matrix of travel time of all the possibility, you know, all the address of the patient, and all the possible uh, travel to and from. And we store this matrix in the memory, it needs to be computed only once. And then it just, it just used, the, it's just used the, uh, by, the, by the algorithm each time. Uh, so we use open street maps uh, to do the calculation of the travel time and, no, and nomina team to do the uh, geocoding part. 
then, as I say, in, in one of the first slides, uh, we have all this data that Cordia was collecting uh, with the app that is a, a, like his historical service time. So we use this data to model a more realistic uh, duration for the visit. So we saw that uh, visits tend to be allocated for longer time that they actually take uh, for the, uh, the, the, that it takes for the visit to take place. So we use this historical data to model the visit, uh, um, the visit duration and uh, forecast uh, and predict uh, what uh, a visit in the future um, could be long. And this, de and this depends on the on the on the patients on the on the type of visit and on the moment of the uh, of the day that the visit takes place. And then we had all these uh, algorithms that I'll just summarize. The, 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 it's like a three stages optimization. The first stage uh, we're just trying to fulfill uh, the visit that requires two carers because are, are the are the hardest one to to uh, fulfill. So that, that's what the first stage does: running this algorithm to fulfill. Uh, the uh, visit that requires two, uh, two home cares. The second stage is try to fulfill all the other visits for that day and that operational area. So after the second stage, you're gonna have uh, a feasible solution, but it might still not be optimal. So you are able to service all visits, single and multiple care. So the third stage is try to do the, uh, the optimization, not just satisfying the constraint, meaning, Try to reduce the number of carers needed to service all these visits and reduce the travel time as well. So at the end of the, of the third stage, you have like your, uh, your optimal solution. And this is some graph to show you how the second and third stage uh, compare. So remember, second stage, you fulfill all the visits, but not in the, in the, in the, in the optimal way. Third stage, you, you try to reduce the number of carers and reduce the travel time. Uh, on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis, are the carers' uh, ID. So you see that after the third stage, you are able to, to reduce. Uh, um, so you are able to fulfill all the visits with six carers less. And it's not that the six carers are without a job; it's that the six carer can be used to uh, fulfill a new visit of new of new uh, patients. And if you look uh, at the orange bars uh, that tells you the travel time of each of these uh, uh, home cares, you see that between the second and third stage, these orange bars uh, have uh, shrinken as well. So there is less, less commuting of the cares between, between the visits. And this is some other uh, histogram that shows you the comparison instead uh, of the automatic solution and uh, the one computed manually by the by the, by the team in Cordia, because uh, to, to, to demonstrate the, the approach, we try to automatically schedule two weeks in the past that were already scheduled manually by the, uh, by the people of the team in Cordia and compare the solution. Uh, so you have in blue the, the human planners, the solution done manually, in uh, orange the second stage, and in green the third stage, that is the final solution. Uh, you can see that the travel time reduced uh, between the blue and the green of uh, almost four times. There is a reduction in uh, uh, idle time. Um, uh, sorry, uh, there is an increase in, in idle time in the green. So this means that uh, there are more cares that can service, uh, like this, uh, more, caver, more cares in the poorer rota that could service more visits because they are in idle time. Uh, a reduction in uh, overtime if you compare the blue um, and the green, so less uh, carers that work extra hours. That is not good for the carers, neither for the company. And each of the solution uh, they can compute, they can be computed in 20 minutes for the largest operational area uh, in Glasgow. So just to give you an idea of how long the algorithm will take, will take to find the solution. And we have. Uh, we have developed uh, a very basic interface because we were more interested to understand uh, uh, the capacity that we could unlock uh, with the current workforce than providing them with a nice uh, user interface. So it was just a console application. The, the final schedule uh, was output in a, an Excel format because that was, that was the, the, prefer the preferred way to analyze the solution, but also in a, a visual uh, Google Earth kind of, uh, of map where you really see like the path of, of, uh, of uh, each carrier for, uh, for that particular solution. So we have found that uh, 
the travel time for carers can be reduced. So currently at the time when we run the project, the carers were working too much between visits. So this could be reduced. Uh, we have increased uh, the carrier capacity, so the current workforce uh, could uh, uh, possibly deliver more uh, services if uh, if schedule would be optimized. Reduction in uh, scheduling resources required to operate the service, so you put an algorithm behind something that was done manually, then you also, have, you also unlock all that workforce potentially. Uh, a better visibility of the uh, of the continuity of care for management. So what was left next? This was just a six month project, uh, was to build also the capability to reschedule the solution. If there are like visit cancels or em emergency call, you need to be, to be able to have the algorithm to reschedule the visit quickly, close to the, to the current solution. Uh, and also, this is more, this is more uh, uh, from a technical mathematical point of view, but there are also algorithms that are able to deal with uncertainties in your problem. So you can, add, you can add the uncertainty like on, on your visit duration or visit start time and build solutions that are more robust if, uh, uh, if something changes in the, uh, in the input to your problem. We use all uh, uh, freely available uh, uh, tool to build, uh, to, to build the solution. So all open source tools that are listed here, the challenge is really to, to build the problem and put all these tools uh, uh, together by, yeah, from a software perspective, would it require uh, major investment? And uh, since we are the university, we are interested also in publishing the results. Uh, we managed last year to get a paper accepted in the Journal of Operational Research Society that is linked here. You can find it also on our profile at the university and explains all the neat and grits of the mathematical approach to solve the problem that I, I kind of left uh, out from this presentation. And also, we, together with the paper, we released uh, openly the, the, the data set that, that we use to, to produce this solution. So to have the, the solution in the paper reproducible, we can also access the data that obviously have been anonymized. There are no sensitive information. There's just uh, travel time between point A and point B without telling you where point A and point B is, so it's just uh, how, how far they are from each other. And I think that's all. It was a bit. It was a bit shorter than, than planned. If you have any questions. That was fabulous. Thank you, Annalisa. We're very grateful to you. OK, anybody like to ask Annalisa any questions, please? Be brave, come along. She's worked hard at this. She's worked really hard at this. No, nothing at all. Annalisa, look, you've, you've done it, girl. You've silenced them. They're, they're, <laughs> they're just stunned by what is taking place. It strikes that this is such a complex thing to be able to do well, it strikes me. Um, you know, when you talked about it at, at, right at the beginning, all of those thousands of interactions and you are manually mapping them out and so on. I just, I just think to myself, goodness me, you know, the scale of the issue that you've got is just staggering. Neil Guthrie's got his hand up. Neil, do please unmute and let's have your question. Um, hi, Annalisa. I just hi. wondered what happened since. Has the project been adopted or is there some, still something they're looking at? Amazing project and nicely <laughs> described. Yeah, good question. They were, uh, so they were very interested in the results, obviously, because it shows them that they, they, they could, they were, there was really capacity that they could better utilize. And uh, at the end of the project, we had a conversation with GCI that was like their internal IT solution developer. So we handed over all the code and explained everything to, to GCI. At, at the time, the idea was to, to, keep, to keep maintaining it and developing uh, within Cordia that then became Glasgow, Glasgow City Council. But, uh, yeah, like they were moving in that in that direction. And we also show with, with a pilot study, we really give the, we, we train uh, one of the person in the management team to use the console application. We show them uh, like the little interface and, uh, and how to run different optimization. So it was also one person, not technical at all from a optimization point of view from Cordia that try to run some other, uh, some other optimization to be so that uh, it's very hard what's behind 
but what ex what is exposed to the to the management team and the user then it's very simple because you just decide the operational area the the, the day or the time range you want to optimize for and just see the see a lot of things print the screen and wait for the solution i, th I think um, we should get this i think we should get this adopted <laughs> elsewhere as well i don't see any reason why glasgow should keep it to itself so uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe there's a way by which we can spread this rather wider. I think, it, dare I say it, into other parts of the United Kingdom as well. That would be <laughs> that would be interesting. Why not? The technique's fantastic. I love the thoroughness of it all. I mean, Ewan said really interesting, and it's a good use of OR techniques and optimization algorithms in this area. Listen, you're not the only place that's had issues with this, and I think your solution to it's been wonderful. So. Annalisa, thank you so much. 